Now I've always liked the new Triumph Bonneville ever since it was reintroduced back in 2001 and having never actually ridden one I always expected this bike to be a bit of a pig especially when you consider all of the negative reviews that are available online about the suspension and steering that kind of thing and to that end when I got hold of this T100 it was just a project bike it wasn't something that I expected to fall in love with but I have to say that's exactly what's happened this bike is an absolute delight to ride and it looks fantastic but I knew right from the start that those checkered decals that adorn the bike uh, just about everywhere had to go now I've never really gone in for this kind of thing anyway to me artwork on a motorcycle should be done properly and it should be sealed under lacquer and it did strike me that the design in some places was a little bit clumsy on this bike but I also knew that removing the decals from this bike wasn't going to be easy because each square that makes up this checkered design is individually attached so they were all going to have to be removed one by one now by far the safest and most efficient way of removing automotive decals from bodywork whether it be on a bike or a car or whatever is by the use of gentle heat all the adhesive used on these products are thermo softening adhesives so once you get it up to the correct temperature it will just peel off really easily now you can use infrared lamps if you have that facility although they are expensive you can also use automotive heat guns but in my view these can be a little bit harsh and you can get yourself into trouble with them so my weapon of choice for doing this kind of job is the decal removal tool HD02 in common with many other useful tools when you're working on your motorcycle this can usually be found on your girlfriend or wife's dressing table it's best to use it while she's out and it'll almost certainly require the filter at the back to be removed and cleaned before you can go ahead and do this job now initially there is a little bit of trial and error involved in finding what is the correct temperature to remove these decals the best way of removing them is to use your fingernails I certainly wouldn't advise that you use any form of implement to scrape the decals off not even a plastic scraper you are likely to cause scratches now if you get the temperature just right you'll find that the peel off really easy and leave very little residue behind most of the adhesive will come off with the decal this job was an absolute nightmare because all of the decals were individual normally speaking if you're dealing with this kind of thing they are going to be much larger and they'll possibly even come off in one piece just work your way through it methodically take your time and don't try to rush it and don't forget when you have finished that HD02 tool make sure you put it back exactly as it was so that you don't get into any trouble now once you've got all the decals off there is going to be some residue left behind so before you start polishing the paintwork you're going to need to remove that and the best chemical for that job is just a standard automotive tar remover just get rid of all the leftover adhesive so you can see the job in hand and you know what needs to be done what you tend to find where decals have been in place on paintwork is the area around the decal picks up your normal sort of hazing and light scratches that all paintwork picks up over time but underneath the decal where it's been protected it usually is in a much better condition and what you need to do is bring all of that paintwork back to the condition that the paintwork was in underneath the decals now I'm not a great fan of autoglim products in general but they do have one polish which is extremely useful for this job I wouldn't advocate that you use it regularly on any paintwork but for jobs like this it is perfect and that is their super resin polish if you buy it in the trade version it's called radiant wax now this product has very little protective properties it is simply a restorative polish and it contains a very fine carbide powder which acts as an abrasive to remove light scratches and swirling now it will remove most scratches but as a general rule of thumb if you can feel a scratch with your fingernail it is probably too deep to be removed but that doesn't mean you can't improve its appearance now this polish doesn't work very well with microfiber cloths so I would recommend that you have a search online and get the finest grade stockinette polishing cloths you can get your hands on 
what happens is that this stocking net absorbs the abrasive powders and in itself it acts like a very very fine sandpaper but don't let it dry out make sure that it stays moist if it does dry out apply a little bit more polish now for general hazed paint work work in circular motions alternating between clockwise and anti-clockwise motions you need to use quite firm pressure and there's no substitute for elbow grease here periodically with a clean dry polishing cloth wipe off the residue and see how the job is looking before you proceed any further now almost all automotive paintwork finishes these days are a base coat and clear that is the base coat is your color coat and the clear is a clear lacquer that goes over the top to give it protection this lacquer acts a little bit like perspex if you scratch perspex you end up with a white line on it so if you get a deeper scratch that you can't remove firmly rub up and down along that scratch making sure that the polish and the cloth contact the bottom of the scratch what this will do is this will polish up the bottom of the scratch and make it less visible but don't overdo it because you can go through the lacquer alternate going along the scratch with also polishing across the scratch if you think of the scratch as a valley what this will do is slightly spread that valley outwards removing the sharp edges from the top of the valley walls and then finish off with your clockwise and anti-clockwise circular motions now in some cases you can use this technique to completely remove the scratch but if in doubt stop either way using this technique the scratch is going to look better than it did before and that is the actual aim of the game here don't use fine sandpapers, uh, abrasive papers, denibbing blocks, anything like that. You're just setting yourself up for a whole world of pain. And I assure you, even an experienced body shop guy will think twice about using those sort of materials to remove scratches. Now, one thing that I did notice is that around the fuel filler the scratching and hazing was particularly bad. And this is because the stock triumph fuel cap is a very low profile item the problem with this is that when you're unscrewing the fuel filler cap or putting it back on your gloves or your fingers are constantly coming in contact with the paintwork around it and all sorts of bits of grit and other particulate matter that are present cause these scratches now this actually probably took the longest amount of time to sort out on the whole job but I did eventually get to the point where I almost had them all out and I've got a remedy to stop that from happening again which I'll come on to in a few minutes. Now I removed these decals and performed this polishing procedure on the tank, the front mudguard and both side panels to bring the paintwork back up to the best it can possibly be without having it all repainted. As I said earlier, this Autoglim Super Resin Polish has very little protective qualities. So what I would advise you to do once you've finished this procedure is to apply three coats of a non-abrasive Carnauba wax of whatever particular brand you prefer. I either use the Muckoff Miracle Shine or the salmonized liquid wax this will improve the finish further and it will also protect the paintwork now for reasons that i've already explained i didn't want to put the original petrol cap back on and a petrol tank without a petrol cap is like a broken pencil. Pointless. So I decided to upgrade to this rather lovely ripple effect brass petrol cap from Motone Customs. I understand they do only have a limited number of these, so I thought I would grab one while I can. It may be that it's only an interim measure because eventually the petrol tank is going to be replaced and the colour scheme is going to change. But for now, I thought this keyed in rather nicely with the gold coach lines on the petrol tank's paintwork. It has an interesting or unusual rippled effect machined into the top, but more importantly, it is a high level petrol cap. It sits well away from the paintwork and it's easily removable. 
without that paint work damage reoccurring that took me so long to correct. Now you may have already noticed that the bike now has some bar end mirrors. Initially when I picked the bike up it did have the stock factory mirrors fitted but in order for the bike to be accommodated in the van they had to come off and I didn't really want to put them back on again. So surprise surprise I turned to Halcyon. Now these are the Halcyon 835 mirrors. The actual stem and knuckle is exactly the same as the 830s and the 820s that I've shown you before. And fitment is very similar on the T100, albeit that you do need a slightly different adapter. Now these mirrors are also referred to as the Street Fighter mirrors. They have a much smaller circular mirror than the mirrors that I've reviewed before, which gives it a more sporty sort of look. Now, I did at first think that the stems were actually shorter than the 830s and the 820s, but they're not, they're the same size. So obviously there's some sort of optical illusion here that makes them appear more compact than the other two siblings. At first, I did think that these mirrors were just a styling exercise and that I didn't expect them to be actually that practical. And it has to be said that they don't give you as good a rearward view as the 820s or the 830s. They seem to have a very slightly convex mirror lens which gives you a slightly magnified rearward view. And after using the larger mirrors on the T120 they did take a little bit of getting used to but eventually I did get used to them and found that they are a perfectly adequate and practical mirror. The adjustment where the mirror dish connects to the stem is on a standard ball and socket affair so you don't need to loosen any nuts off to adjust it. And of course, in common with all the other models, the construction is of a polished stainless steel. So keeping them looking good is going to take minimal effort. As usual, when you fit bar end mirrors, removal of the factory mirrors leaves that ugly and unsightly hole in the lever mount. So I fitted the mirror delete kit from Motone Customs, which is designed for the older Hinkley Triumphs up to the model year 2015. They're anodized and color matched to blend in with the lever mounting on the bike and they are a very precise and snug fit. Fitting both sides literally takes just a couple of minutes. You simply insert the mirror delete plug into the top and then thread the screw with washer onto the bottom and screw it into place. I would recommend that you put a little bit of thread lock on these just to ensure that they don't work loose over time and drop out. The finishing effect is almost seamless and most people are not even going to be able to tell that there was ever a hole there. And finally, last but not least, the master cylinder cover. Now I fitted one of Motone's master cylinder covers to my T120 some time ago. And they actually do do several different models. There's the version with the Motone's signature as I fitted to the T120. There are two plain ones in either polished or black anodized finish. And there are two Union Jack versions, both in black anodized and in polished alloy. Again, these are CNC machined from aluminium billet and they're simply light years ahead of the factory unit that comes with the bike. The anodizing is absolutely perfect and the Union Jack design stands out in a very crisp relief. It's an excellent and precise fit, every bit as good as the factory fit. And I am starting to feel now as though the customization of this bike has really got underway. Now there are loads of really cool and exciting parts for this bike in the pipeline and I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into this project properly in this new year. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that it has perhaps inspired you. If you have enjoyed it please leave a like and please subscribe to the channel. I'll be back a week next Wednesday with part 5 and I'll also be back this Friday with a look at a new bike jack. Thanks for watching. Ride safely and I'll see you next time.